Oh, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the first ever Mr. D art YouTube video. So let's, uh, let's address the elephant in the room first, shall we? There it is. Okay, so just that. Okay, yeah, all set. Put that there. All right, let's talk about the obvious. The obvious is, why is Mr. D on YouTube in a square on your screen right now? That's because I gave you guys art activities. Now, they're not graded. You don't have to do them. They're there if you want to do them. They're there if you like the art, you want to impress your family, you want to impress me. Uh, so kindergarten, first and second, your art projects are on the teacher page. Third, fourth, and fifth, you are on the Google Classroom. Already sent all those codes out. So we're going to start with kindergarten first and second and the project they're doing. But before I do, quick word to you fifth graders. If you wanted to try out for the creative arts program, what I'm going to do, the next video I'm going to make, which is a couple days down the road, is going to be filled with some tips, some hints, some tricks, so that when you go to take that exam, that you kind of got like a heads up as to how to shade, what to do, what tools you can use, and uh, it's generate ideas pretty much. So, that being said, let's start with kindergarten first and second, shall we? What are you doing? What are you up there for? What are you doing? Okay, kindergarten, first, second grade. Here's what you're going to do. You are going to make a straight line going across the middle of your paper, just like that. You're going to make a triangle with only two sides. Starting from a little point right in the middle of that line, that horizontal line you just made. One line's going to go this way, one line's going to go that way. Now that's not bad. If you have one, you can use a ruler and these lines will look a whole lot better. So I get my horizontal line going across, put my dot in the middle. Now I'm going to make my two lines for my triangle. Don't want to go all the way to the end here. Don't want to go too far close to the middle. You want it right in between the middle and the end. Right around here. There's one. And there's two. Once that's done, this could be a road. This road starts close, goes far away. And you can make uh, dotted lines on the road. The dotted lines that go here are very big. The dotted lines that are back here are very small and they get bigger and bigger and bigger as you get closer to you. So it looks like the road's going away. Next thing you do is you got to choose to put something in your background on this horizon line. Now second graders it could be a city again or you could just make mountains. Make a couple mountains here. They're triangular but they're bumpy looking. They're not perfect triangles. I know a lot of you guys would make these as mountains and then put shark teeth in as if there's a cap on the top, right? You could do that. That's fine. If you want to take it a step further, don't make them so sharp. Make them a little more bumpy. Let your hand kind of wiggle around as you go. Then what I like to do is I like to put another little mountain in the background. Maybe they're going farther and farther away in the back. Little tiny guys in the middle of there. It gets smaller and smaller. There you go. Uh, you could put a mountain here, or you could choose to leave it empty so that it looks like there's a valley in between those mountains. So there we have the horizon line, the two triangle lines going to that little dot in the middle. If you want to add something in the sky, birds, clouds, hot air balloons, an airplane. Put a couple clouds up here. Now the trick is, what you want to do is, as the clouds get closer to the line here, they'll get smaller. Smaller and smaller, so you can barely see them anymore. So it looks like there's a distance. Looks like it's going in. All right? Fool around with this. Have some fun with it. All right? Everything's bigger here, and it gets smaller as you go to the middle. Everything's bigger here, and it gets smaller as you go to the middle. Once you're done with that, 
you could add anything else to the sides of this road. So trees, usually people do trees, so way, way in the back, the trees are pretty small. They're tiny trees back here. As the trees get closer away from that line right there, they're going to get bigger and bigger. And I'll just keep these as pines for now. Just for the sake of you guys doing the work and not me doing all the work. You can do different types of trees, have some fun with it. Here's a tree here. Now what I want to do is put a really big tree right here because it's like really close. Look how I went right through that tree right there. Maybe there's like a big old tree right here too. Wow, that's a, that's a big tree right there. So if you do that, you can erase anything inside the big trees to make it look like it's overlapping. You can add more of a forest back here. Remember to make the trees way in the back really small. And I could keep going with this forest. I could keep building and building on it. You know, you can even do things like, ah, I want to make a, maybe like there's a, a light on top of here like that. Well, if I put a light there, maybe down the road more, there's another one. But that one is going to look smaller because it looks like it's going farther and farther away. All right, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, I'd love to see what you come up with. Well, give it a shot, have some fun with it. And uh, if you make something really cool, uh, you can email it to me, that'd be awesome. And uh, maybe I can post it online for you. All right, have fun. Woo! How's it going, third grade? What you're gonna do is the name project. My first name's Jason. It's pretty easy, I have five letters in the name. Uh, the S would go in the middle. And I'm going to make it this way because it kind of helps me space the letters out. Sun. There you go. There's my name right there. Notice I put some space in between because we're going to make these into block letters. And the way we make block letters is just by running around the letter. Going to outline each of them. If that video is working on the uh, Google Classroom that you have, uh, they'll be doing something very similar, if not the same thing, as what I'm doing right here. There's the S, here comes the O, and there's the N. There you go. Once you're done with that, you want to erase everything on the inside. That O looks a little too thin to me, so I'm going to put an extra in there. That makes me happy. I uh, went a little Bob Ross there with the, the happy little O. Alright, got the this one. Now the A, your A's, your R's, your letter P's, letters like that where um, you have something going on on the inside. When you erase it, you're just going to have to add the shape that goes with it in there. Now that that's done, I'm going to put a dot somewhere up there. It could be high, a little lower. And I'd like every corner of the letter, the top of the letters, to go to that dot. There you go, there you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the first three letters so that I can explain some things to you. I don't want to take too long on this. So there's the tops of my letters right there going straight to that. I call it a vanishing point. I keep calling it a dot. Once the tops of the letters are done, I have a problem with this. There's no corner on this. So what you do is you make believe you're walking on this S. And you can see this vanishing point from where you are. The minute as you're walking, if you can't turn around and see that vanishing point, like I was standing right here, the S would be in the way. So right around here is where the edge of my S is going to be. And that's where I'm going to make my line, right there. Okay. Now that the tops of the letters are done, I'm going to go to the bottoms of the letters. Here's a corner right here. There's the dot. Lined it up. Can't go through the letter. You don't want to run through the letter. You stop 
when there's a letter in the way. And here's a corner here, line it up with the dot. Here's another corner, line up with the dot, stops on that S right there. Here's another corner, line it up with that vanishing point. Here's another corner. And again, on this side of the S, I have to walk around until I cannot see that vanishing point anymore, and that's where I'm going to draw the line. And there it is. Now, I've got the same thing with the J right here. All right? So I walk around the J until I can't see that vanishing point anymore, somewhere around here. And that's where the edge of the J is going to go, like that. Okay, so that part's done. Now that that's all done, it's all downhill from here. Uh, and uh, you can decorate it. Uh, you can actually kind of erase that point right there. What I'm going to do, for sake of time, I'm going to leave the ruler there and do these lines fairly quickly. They're not going to be the straightest things in the world. Ooh, that's terrible. I'm kind of making it going towards the dot. I just want to hurry up because I don't want the video to be so long. There you go. That's what it's going to end up looking like. Now, notice I didn't do these corners here. The reason why I didn't do those corners is because I'd be drawing through the letter. You can't draw through the letter. You have to stop on the letter. Once that's done, you can keep it like this and color it this way, or you can shop it off somewhere along this point. Use the eraser right there. And if the S is curved here, then the S would be curved there. If the O is curved here, then the O would be curved there. Straight there. Oop, wrong spot. Right there. And then it falls, so then that would fall. I'm gonna follow this over. That goes straight and then falls. That goes straight and then falls. This goes straight and then falls that way. So you could do it like this too. You could make it so that the the lines terminate at this point, or they could go straight to the vanishing point. And then when you decorate it, you could do like all sorts of stuff polka dots on the sides. You can color it any way you want it. It's just squiggly lines or something like that. Have some fun with it. See what works, what doesn't work. And uh, if you make one and you're feeling up to it, share it on the Google slide. Send it in. Any good ones, I'll post it on the, the social media and give you a shout out on it. All right, have some fun with this. Fourth grade, you guys are doing the hand project. So let me give you a hand with, yeah, I just said that. Okay, so you're gonna put your hand on the paper, keep the pencil straight up, and you're going to go around your tire hand, and please keep the pencil straight up, because if you don't keep the pencil straight up, this is what's gonna happen. Yay, everything's wonderful, everything's fine, lovely, lovely, lovely. Think you're doing it right, think everything's great. You take your hand off, you've got that going on. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's keep the pencil straight up and down, shall we? While we do this, so you get the outside of the hand and not underneath. If you got a ruler, this is really good to use. If you don't have a ruler, you can always take a piece of paper and fold it, and it gives you just enough of a straight edge right there that it'll just work just like a folder. A piece of cardboard will do, a magazine, anything like that. All right, so once you got your ruler and you're ready to go, you're going to just keep making lines going straight down. Just keep making lines. This is the way I would do this because it'll keep you honest. You can keep track of the width of the lines as you go down. I am going a little bit fast for time's sake. And what I want to do is about half the hand. And then, oh, uh, kind of went through that one there. Almost to the halfway point. And then once I do that, I can show you how to do the bumps on the hand and that you have to erase the outline of your hand when you're done. That's what makes it look like it's really 
popping up at you. You're really not going to get that optical illusion until, uh, hey now, there you go. You're not going to get that optical illusion until you erase your hand. Alright, so right now you keep it there so that you can put these bumps in. And I like using the ruler because you know exactly where you start and end with all the bumps. Just like this. And you just keep doing it. Each one gets the bump and you keep going and going. Once you're done making all these bumps, what you want to do after that is I like to black outline. Everybody knows how much I like my Sharpies, so I grab a Sharpie and start black outlining them. And we're almost there. I can show you the interesting things that happen once you get away from the finger, like when you start doing these things, right? This is a little bumpy, little bumpy. I, could pro I should probably go up a little bit more for that one because there's so much distance in between there. And then as you come off the hand, what you want to do is make less of those and more of a long bump going across. I'm going to forego the ruler for a minute and show you what happens here. Let's get that thumb in there. And that's what's going to happen after that. And you just keep going down like that. All right? Once you're done with that, Sharpie! You're going to use the Sharpie marker to do all these lines. Now, not the outside of the hand. You don't want to do the outside of the hand. You want that left alone. You just want to do these. This isn't the greatest Sharpie marker in the world. How dare I? No gold coin for me. Do one right here. I'll just do those for now. Once that's done, take your eraser, you do all those black lines. That's when you erase the outline of your hand. Once that happens, that's when the optical illusion starts to occur of it actually bumping off the paper. Hopefully you can kind of see that on the video. Um, interesting project, you know, when you're done, uh, what you could do after that is you could start using color to go inside all those gaps. You can keep switching colors. Whoa, that is one thick marker right there. There you go, and you just keep doing that all the way across and it gives a really cool effect. If you get done with it, looking sharp, you're feeling brave, put it on the Google slide. Let me see what you got. Uh, once you put it on there, everybody gets to look at it, boo and ah on it. Uh, and uh, hopefully I can post a couple of them on uh, the little Twitter, little tweet tweet. And uh, there you go, have some fun with it. Ooh. All right, fifth grade, let's do this. Airplane time. So for your airplane, I'm going to make this one fairly quickly. And you can slow down the video and kind of copy off what I do. This is the plane that I love to make. This is the one that I learned in high school. And it uh, did well for me. A lot of interesting stories about this, this plane. Maybe I'll tell you a couple at some point down the road. And I'm gonna do the top. Looks like, you know, kind of same type of plane you would normally make, right? Until you get to here. You take this entire upper triangle, fold it down so that the crease is along this whole line. Got nice corners right there. Now I'm gonna fold it over like a card. So I have that rectangle. Once this is done, I wanna take these corners and tear them. I'm gonna tear it like a square out of it. Not a big one. Not too small either. Could use scissors. Scissors are fine. Open it up and I'm going to take this corner here, bring it down so it goes along straight along this crease here. Do it to both sides. Now again, 
pause the video, slow it down if you want to make this. Once this is done, you got a little flap here. You bring that up, fold it up, kind of locks it in place. Also kind of plays with the weight in the middle of the plane too. Once you have that, fold the whole plane in half. Now you're starting to get your plane. And then you make your wings. Uh, as long as the wing, when you bring the wing down, as long as the wing goes past this corner, you don't want it to go here. It's never going to work. You want that wing past the corner. And I like it way past the corner. I like, I like a really nice glider right here. Bring it way down so that there's a, just a slight incline going up right there. Once that's done, it's easier to do the other side when you flip it because you know exactly where to fold it. Just keep it even with the other wing. And there you go. At this point, you can have some fun with it. Little flaps on the sides. You can fold these sides up. And then what I, what I really like doing is taking the back of the wing, tearing a small piece off of it, and using these flaps too. And what this does is you can really, really play around with it once you have this. All right? So, what I want you to do if you make this plane is experiment with it. What would happen if I were to bring this one down, leave that one up, and then fly it? What would happen with the wind going over and underneath it? What if you took these instead and you brought them down? What would happen to the plane when you do this? And why? Right? What if you only did one of these on the side and kept the other one up? Then you get like really do some really funky things with it and just test it and see what happens. Um, with all these up and ready to go, uh, it tends to be a really good glider. I mean, not, obviously not as good as the world record one that the video uh, shows on the Google Classroom that I gave you. Hopefully that's open for you to watch. But uh, if you decide to make a plane and you decide to throw it, uh, record your results, please. Throw it on the Google Sheets and take a picture of it and throw it on the Google slide, love to take a look at it, and then I'll calculate all the points and see who's got a really good plane. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you got something out of it and hope to see you guys real soon. Until then, I'll throw out our next video in the next couple of days and uh, I guess the right thing to do would be to go with tradition here and you can imagine news music in the background. It's the best I got. See you later, guys.